stories, spirituality, pathways, and aliens. You're here on The Long Road Home. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Hello. Hi, everyone. Season's greetings. Welcome to another episode of The Long Road Home. I'm Emily. And I'm Chad. Yeah. I gotta got tell you, I've been really busy lately. It's been a busy day even today for me. I've been got went and got Emily some gifts. I did oh. some DoorDash. And I gotta say, as a DoorDasher, I now have my thumb on the pulse of America. <laughs> and our pulse is just full of fat. Oh no, is it full. a faint faint it's, pulse? <laughs> it's getting fainter every day. <laughs> I think. But it's been a busy day for me, but we're here, we're recording, and we're going to have this out to you right before Christmas, I believe, right? Is Christmas next week? Christmas is next week, yeah. That's so, crazy. Yeah, this will be coming to you guys then the week before. Christmas. Yeah, okay. Jesus, God. Yeah, you're totally yeah. right. We record the week of. That's right. I totally forgot. Anywho. It didn't start that way, but no, we're here it and it's fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. We hope everyone's having a great December so far. We've almost finally made it through 2020. I can feel it on the tip of my tongue. I've been thinking about this a lot lately. I'm definitely excited for 2020 to be over. It's been a hell of a year, but I don't want to get too carried away. Let's not make any big, bold statements about what 2021 is going to be like. That's all I'm saying. Let's just like go into it completely open-minded, minimal expectations, and see how it goes. Yeah, 20, <laughs> the, the name, the numbers, 2020, it's just a construct. It, it, is. Doesn't, it means absolutely We're nothing. St- I mean, the, the time that we are living in, the age that we are living in will still continue into next year. Exactly. The pandemic will still continue into next year. So, like, let's just keep the bar low and just take it a day at a time. It's not and a bad idea. And be grateful for every little victory along the way. Absolutely. Deal? Okay. We need them. We, <laughs> we need those need little them. victories because, God, uh, 2021 is just coming. You know, we don't know what's happening yet. We don't know what it's got in store for us. But could be better. Open mindedness. Mm-hmm. That's what we're gonna exactly. take into it. The yeah. age of Aquarius. It's age coming. Age of Aquarius. Right? Is that that's right. Aquarius. Sometime in twenty twenty one. Actually it's supposed to tech there are some people that say that age of Aquarius will happen or that it begins to happen on the solstice. The day oh, of solstice. Yeah. So that's my, well my next brother week. told me it already happened in like twenty twelve. There are some people that believe that it already happened. There are some people that believe it it actually took place in March of this year, which is really interesting. Um, the reason why some people believe it uh, to be taking place um, during the solstice is because of certain planetary alignments that are happening. Jupiter and I believe Saturn are going to be like in direct alignment for the first time in the last 500 touching years. Butts. They're touching butts. Cool. Yeah, sure. Let's say that. So um, that the last time that that happened was in the 1600s. So that's where a lot of people are getting that from. like the renaissance comparisons and the enlightenment and all that Ex- stuff exactly exactly so i'm here for it yeah um, i'm interested to we'll see, see what happens we'll see what happens absolutely well anywho so everyone's been talking about this we also have to talk about it the ex space commander of israel claims that uh you know they're here the aliens are here they've been here they've been here they told, told us that we weren't ready i mean you guys know that we knew and you knew we all knew that yeah, this, we all that knew. this the, the something was awry Donald here. Donald Trump knew. Apparently, Donald Trump knew as well. I think Obama well. knew. I think Bill. So just Bill to Clinton clarify, knew. so just to clarify knew. before we jump in and start like ranting about this story, let's tell you what the story is. Former Israeli space security chief says extraterrestrials exist, and Trump knows about it. By the way, this is coming to you from. We have multiple articles that we are referencing. Um, I'm reading from NBC News, though. Yeah, and I got some shit from the New York Post, <laughs> the Hill, pretty much wherever. But it was it's all everywhere. over the place. It it's, was all over it's the place. Constantly this here. So, um, yes, a former Israeli space security chief has sent eyebrows shooting heavenward by saying that Earthlings have been in contact with extraterrestrials from a galactic federation. Quote, the aliens have asked not to publish that they are here. Humanity is not ready yet. That quote comes from Haim Ashed, former head of Israeli's uh, defense. He also said that the aliens were equally equally curious about humanity and we're seeking to understand the fabric of the universe. So essentially, um, a, he also made claims that agreements have been made between humankind and um, extraterrestrials. Yeah. Haim also says that they have been waiting for humanity to evolve and reach a stage where we will generally understand what space and spaceships are. So we are on the verge of absolutely nothing, according to Haim. The aliens think we are tiny, small, smooth brain children. 
right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> Absolutely. He also said that Trump was on the verge of revealing aliens' existence, but the aliens in the Galactic Federation, which, <laughs> what? I know. <laughs> wait, they said, wait, let people calm down first, because we have been very calm for a number of years now, and, uh, you know, I, we could only, I guess we could get calmer. Yeah, I think they're like, let's simmer. They were like, you are not in a place where you are ready for this information, and if this were to come out, it would cause mass hysteria. Yeah, because we haven't had any of that right. at all lately. Right. You, you know, know, a little tiny virus, microscopic virus, didn't didn't cause mass hysteria. No, everything's hysteria, fine. Right? Everything's totally Why fine. Why would aliens? 2021's here. Everything's fine. Uh, you know, people have said for, you know, years, all the presidents know something about aliens. Barack Obama famously turned down an interview with Stephen Colbert on The Late Show to discuss aliens, and some people are like... <laughs> Deep state. They know oh, everyone's after him. Uh, and so they, a lot of people think that Obama knew about aliens. Everyone's talked about George Bush knowing about him. Bernie Sanders said he would tell us if they were aliens. And I wish so bad we could go back four years and just let Bernie win. Come on, man. I'd like to know what the world would be like. What well, would the simulation, so you know, we have well, went down one path of the simulation. And I'm curious as to what those millions of others could have been. Well, you know, what I find really interesting is that there's no, um, like, timeline talked about in any of these articles. So, like, how long? How long has this been a thing? I, has it been decades? Has it been years? Has it been months? Like, what are what are we talking here? Yeah, I know. I, I really, truly think this goes back to the Eisenhower agreement with uh, the the Nordic aliens. They He didn't like the gray people. He didn't, the, Excuse me, the gray aliens. He did not like gray aliens at all. They creeped him out. Well, he a lot of people like say that grays are, um, I don't want to use the word evil, but pe- some, some say that grays are like the bad aliens. Well, yeah, They're and like the bad guys. No, absolutely, and they are associated with like uh, giving Nazis technology right. and stuff like that, and see, some people see them as evil demons and stuff. So, re- regardless, <gasps> regardless, dude, wait, did you even see the thing about freaking? Oh my God, what's his name? What's his name? What's his name? The book, The Lesser Key of Solomon. Who wrote that? Alistair Crowley. Did you see the? I saw something this week that was talking about Alistair Crowley. Oh, and they the, and reopened the, the his demons, home, right? The demons that he was communicating with. No. <gasps> Hold on, hang on. So there are some people that are theorizing that Alistair Crowley was actually also communicating with the Galactic Federation, and well, that the Galactic Federation consists of great aliens. Oh, I'm, I'm certain that they, they are part of it, and you know, I would imagine, like at some point. I can't remember who said it, but like technology will reach a point where it's going to appear like magic to people who don't fully understand it. So it's very easy to see how something like that could have happened. Yeah. So that was the whole mm-hmm. th- the whole theory was that like that demons are really are really aliens, and that Aleister Crowley in his like summoning of these spirits and demons, he was really interacting with extraterrestrials. Yeah, we're starting to get into Alex Jones territory. He's I- you know, and God is a comet, and all the good things in life are at the head of the comet, and all the gray aliens are at the tail. We're you know all mixed mash and mishmash. I resent that statement because I fully, I, <laughs> I am, I think that I am a well educated um, paranormal investigator, yes. and that I really try to find well rounded theories. Um, and I'm not, yeah, no, no, no. This is the whole point of us sharing this story with our listeners today is that extraterrestrials are now in the mainstream media. This shit is not psycho. It is not crazy. It's real. Damn it. Yes, it absolutely is. Thank you. <laughs> um, and, you know, it's it's hard to say at this point because this has happened several times already this year. It seems like it just gets passed over. It seems like filler at this point. And it seems like why in a time, why wouldn't you, I guess I should say, at a time like this, put that information out because everyone's so worried about other things. Even if it was true, no one cares. So they're they're putting stuff out in the open. People aren't paying enough attention to it. You're such a pessimist. I love you. But listen, the people at the long road home are paying attention. <laughs> we are Chad. paying attention. We're paying attention. And we are we are making sure that our listeners are paying attention. And I think that yeah. there's a movement happening yeah. where people are going to take note of these articles. Yeah. And we're going to realize that it goes all the way to the top. It's all the way to the top. All the way. And we're going to break down societal structures. And just live with the aliens. I want the truth. Just want the truth. It's, Tell me the it's truth. It's happening. It's this happening. is the start. All Little right. steps. Yes. Make big progress. Yes, they okay. do. Yeah, uh, you know. Anywho. Anywho, we should probably I'm, like actually talk about what we're wanting to talk about today. Well, yeah, exactly. I would like to say that uh, Haim is uh, what eighty six years old, eighty four, something like that. He says, if I had come up with what I'm saying today five years ago, I would have been hospitalized. Wherever I've gone with this in academia, they've said the man has lost his mind. Today, 
They're already talking differently. I have nothing to lose. I've received my degrees and awards. I am respected in universities abroad where the trend is also changing. Exactly. He sees it too. You're right. We need to break down the stigma. Hence yes. UAPs. That's why we've changed the name of UFOs. Now they're UAPs. So that way people will actually be believed when they report something. Yes. <sighs> Sorry. Krampus. I'm, I'm hot. We're talking I'm hot. about Krampus today, everybody. Krampus is the hot is the hot topic. Okay. Krampus. Krampus. We're talking about Krampus today, everyone. Uh welcome to the real show. <laughs> I yes. got. I like. I think I blacked out a little bit. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, Christmas is coming. Christmas is coming. The goose is getting fat. Please do put a penny in an old man's hat. If you haven't got a penny, a hey penny will do. If you haven't got a hey penny, God bless you. Yeah. So I was gonna ask you if you wanted sorry. to read this. But you, you know it. what? You you, you had a really beautiful song there. Thank you. And we're going to just keep that. Did you like it? I got right in that head voice. Mm-hmm. It's yeah. great. Very uh, soprano. Yes. Well done. I did it. Christmas is coming. The ghost is good. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm sorry. You, you wrote it. You <laughs> You're wrote You're like one of those Christmas YouTube videos. Every time I say Christmas, you sing the song. And I... It turns into like a 15-hour track. Let's do it. Yes. Oh, man. That would be great. Patreon content. <laughs> Christmas is coming, and for most children in the United States, that means the appearance of parental happiness for about 36 hours. For the kids appearance, living. I'm sorry, I love that line. <laughs> <laughs> the appearance of parental happiness. You gotta be happy. Especially if you're not happy. in the year 2020. Yeah, exactly. Have you seen all the memes about like parents this year? Uh, and there's like. I'm sure they're ready to kill the their children. Like, Christmas, yay, it's Christmas. I'm so happy. <laughs> I really have enjoyed being with you for 24 hours a day. Aww. It's been great. For kids living in Europe, however, Christmas has a slightly different connotation. The approach of Santa also means the coming of a different type of holiday character. Some call him malevolent. I like to call him the realest motherfucker of the holidays. And we all call him Krampus. Hooray! Yeah, this is turning out to be a really fun episode. This is going to be a fun one, everyone, so enjoy. You want to see where we got our sources from? Yeah, we got all of our information from ancientorigins.net, wildhunt.org, krampusfest.com, britannica.com, history.com, a really great Vice article called The Story of Krampus, the Original Bad Santa, pulled from German folklore, uh, seawitchbotanicals.com, mentalfloss.com, and smithsonianmag.com, Wikipedia. And one last article that kind of is a little contrarian to the rest of our sources, which we might talk about later and is interesting. If you want a different opinion, tales of times forgotten.com. It's one person and they have some very strong opinions oh, about Krampus it. and their own beliefs. I'm here for it. Mm-hmm. So if you're listening to this podcast, you probably know who Krampus is, but just in case you don't in central European folklore, Krampus is a horned anthropomorphic figure described as half goat, half demon who during the Christmas season punishes children who have misbehaved. The antithesis to jolly old Saint Nick, Krampus is a horned beast with dark hair, fangs, and a Gene Simmons-esque tongue. Yeah, he knows how to use it, too. <laughs> wink, 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 wink. Oh, my God. Honk, honk. Ew. Wink, 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 wink. Ah. It's the responsibility of Krampus to deal with all the little shits out there who really thought Papa Claus was just going to allow them to throw a tantrum in the Ryan Steakhouse because the ice cream machine was broken. That's oddly specific. Because it was me. That was you. I know. (laughs) You can tell when Chad wrote a line. (laughs) I was never like that angry, but sometimes, you know, I just got furious in the Ryan. If you don't know what Ryan Steakhouse is and if you lived in the South. Wait, no, that was you. I'm sorry. You were the one throwing the tantrum in the Ryan Steakhouse because the ice cream she was broke. (laughs) I totally misunderstood. (laughs) Oh, no. Baby Chad. Baby Chad ate a lot of ice cream. Probably wasn't the healthiest kid. We're working on it, so getting better every day. <laughs> Wielding a bunch of birch sticks, Krampus gives naughty children a proper beatdown before picking them up and hauling them off into the underworld. This description comes to us from KrampusFest.com. Quote, This towering, seven-foot-tall, hairy creature is depicted as having bulging eyes, a whip-like tongue, pointed ears, and horns atop his head. He carries a pitchfork, or more traditionally, a bundle of birch switches, to menace children as he travels through town on a pair of mismatched feet, one cloven hoof, the other a bear-like claw. Wayward children caught by Krampus are spanked, whipped, and even shackled to be spirited away in either a basket or barrel to Krampus's lair. Once there, they receive further punishment until they are repentant. Yeah, that's not spirited away in the sense of the wonderful 
Oscar worthy movie Spirited Away. This is more of a I'm taking you to hell, little whisk, kid. Whisk I'm gonna beat you with sticks and then we're going to hell <laughs> till you say sorry for having that tantrum about the ice cream machine. All you, they were they had vanilla, they had chocolate. The only one that wasn't working was the swirl. Why did you have a tantrum? <laughs> You could have just got a, a scoop of the chocolate. You could have and made it. You could have made it. You could have made the swirl. Yeah, I got a lot of regretful choices in my life. Did Krampus come and beat you, Chad? Do we have something? We need no, to talk but I about? think someone wanted him to. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Krampus's name is derived from the German word Krampen, meaning claw, and shares characteristics from other scary demonic creatures in Greek mythology, including satyrs and fauns. There are also some untrue claims floating around that Krampus is the son of the Norse goddess Hel, who rules over a share of the dead, according to a deal with Odin. Yeah, and that's something that I read through sort of briefly. It's, it sounded really cool, but then it comes to find out that it was just like some stuff that someone at some point had made up. Someone but, just decided to draw connections that weren't there. The, I, yeah, essentially. Hel is uh, the, also, the I believe, the mother of Loki, and she rules over essentially the underworld. So... Brave warriors who die in battle go to Valhalla with Odin, and she receives the rest of us. <laughs> I like how you said the rest of us. <laughs> I like how you just, you left yourself in, not with the Vikings, but everyone else. I was just, yeah, no, I don't see us. myself dying in a glorious <laughs> battle. You know, if I'm lucky, my brain will just go, and that'll be it. Chad Shelton, you know? we don't put those things out in the air. Oh, my God. Okay, so I could see where someone might have drawn the connections that he was, like, related to the Norse god of the underworld or goddess, Norse goddess of the underworld, but... Yeah, this is something that is talked about in the Tales of Thomas Forgotten. That person that wrote that art, that little blurb or whatever you want to call it, they are not happy with pretty much every interpretation of Krampus or witchcraft, pagan, Wicca in general. Oh, really? They go, actually... 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 That's okay. You know what? We, sometimes those. we need those people, man. It is, but it's it makes things uninclusive. When you're not when you're when you'd rather berate someone than teach them the right thing, you're creating an exclusivity that becomes difficult to get through and you're making things harder for yourself. Yeah, no, that's true. That's why we're here. Yeah, be that's nice why to one we're another. Here, is we're like, hey, Learn. we get it. There's a lot of information out there. Sometimes you get the wrong stuff. Let's exactly. figure it out together. Yeah. Although Krampus is affixed to St. Nicholas these days, thanks to Catholicism, his roots have nothing to do with Christmas. Krampus legends seem to date much further back, although researchers have had some trouble figuring out just where the origin stories began. What we do know is that most likely those stories date back to pre-Germanic paganism in the region. The evidence for this is actually in what Krampus hauls around to whip kids with. Folklorist Maurice Bruce had this to say about the bundle of birchwood in an article published in 1958. Quote, there seems to be little doubt as to his true identity, for in no other form is the full regalia of the horned god of the witches so well preserved. The birch, apart from its phallic significance. Yes, phallic, long, <laughs> stiff birch. Couldn't you say that about it? So it makes a mule kick. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> so it makes Krampus's one hooved leg kick. Uh... Okay, the birch, apart from its phallic significance, may have a connection with the initiation rites of certain witch covens, rites which entailed binding and scourging as a form of mock death. The chains could have been introduced as a Christian attempt to bind the devil, but again, they could be a remnant of pagan, of pagan initiation rites. In case you aren't familiar with the horned god, we did the wiki search for you. The Horned God is one of the two primary deities found in Wicca in some related forms of neo-paganism. The term Horned God itself predates Wicca and is an early 20th century syncretic term for a horned or antlered anthropomorphic god partly based on historical horned deities. Uh, looking up the Horned God stuff was actually super cool. It's really interesting. Uh, neo-paganism itself is based off the idea that there were these uh, survivors of uh, witchcraft that were hidden away during uh, the Christianity period of like Greece and Rome and all that. But it turns out none of that was true, apparently, and that was also just made up. But regardless, there are these traditions that predate all of those things that are still being carried out through Wicca and paganism and stuff like that. Very cool. Yeah, and it's all, yeah, so it's just like, like an, an updated rituals. version of it. Yeah, yes, yeah, it's pretty cool. But Horned God is, like, I like looking up all those, like, old deities and stuff. They're super cool, and, like, their symbols are always kind of crazy looking or, like, Super ancient and just eerie. Yeah. Uh, it's really cool. Definitely a little spooky. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The horned god represents the male part of the religion's duotheistic theological system. 
In other words, he's the companion of the female triple goddess of the moon or mother goddess. In common Wiccan belief, he is associated with nature, wilderness, sexuality, hunting, and the life cycle. Whilst depictions of the deity vary, he is always shown with either horns or antlers upon his head, often depicted as being... I believe that is theriocephalic. That's how you say that. I could, you could let me try it first. You could let me try, try to say it first. <laughs> I, I don't know. I was going to go for it. it. I saw it the, the first time I looked at it. and it took, I was like, I don't know what that means. <laughs> so that's why I put having a beast head in parentheses. He is often depicted as being theriocephalic. Theriocephalic. Nice. Theriocephalic? Theriocephalic. Uh, yeah, cephalic. Theriocephalic. In other words, having the beast said, which Chad just said. Um, in this way, emphasizing the union of the divine and the animal, the latter of which includes humanity. I so, just, st- I struggle with that the thought of the, the divine always including us. When I think of divine beings, very rarely do I think of like just your average Joe every man walking around in rural America. I think that for us, divinity, if we're going to relate to it or want to worship it, we want to know that we're like, we are of it. Yeah. We're part of it. We're part of it. You're not going to want to worship just a straight up animal. You're going to want it to have some form of consciousness. And if you don't know of anything else other than humans that have consciousness, like that was, that's how a God would be depicted. Right. I mean, maybe that giraffes look pretty cool though. Giraffe? Yeah, giraffes. You managed to see one of those? You never seen one of those before in your life? Immediately, I'd go, that thing created the earth. <laughs> you think so? Praise you ever seen it. them fight? Yeah, it's fucking wild. Just whipping <laughs> their heads around? I think right then I'd be like, maybe not. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. I've made a huge mistake. I've spent the last two years sacrificing animals to the giraffe. I could rethink my, my life choices. Oh, my God. Traditional Wicca places the horned god as a dualistic god, encompassing things like bright and dark, night and day, summer and winter, and the Oak King and Holly King. I love those names. Those are so cool to me for some reason. I want to know. I'm going to look more into them. And it'd be the Holly Queen. Holly Queen. <laughs> so taking this interpretation, we can see pretty easily where the ideas for Krampus appear to originate. I did find some other interesting information on ancientorigins.net, but without a proper source, it's hard to say if this is true, although it does line up. They say that the pagan tradition involves people, mostly young men, dressing up to scare away winter ghosts, usually fearful mountain spirits that like to come down and wreak havoc. Wearing fur suits and carved masks, they paraded through villages yelling, ringing bells, and generally making a racket. The custom was oftentimes carried out on the longest night of the year, the winter solstice. Along with other pagan traditions, Krampus became entwined with Christmas as Christianity spread throughout Eastern Europe. So whatever the true origins, the stories are, in fact, Scandinavian in nature. Some form of a Krampus-like spirit seems to pop up in just about any small alpine community there. According to Al Reidner in his 2016 book, The Krampus and the Old Dark Christmas Roots and Rebirth of the Folkloric Devil. The Krampus tradition seems to have been the most prominent in Austria and Bavaria, being the strongest in Western Austria. Reidnor cites this region as the most probable provenance of the Krampus. There are other figures like the... There are other figures like... Okay, I'm about to list off some other similar like figures, but they're all originating from Eastern Europe, so I'm going to do my best. Bear with me. There is the Necht Rupecht, the Per Futard, the Schmutzili, and even Zwart Piet. So all of those bear a striking resemblance to the Krampus in function, if not always in appearance. And it seems more likely that rather being an individual, the Krampus could be a category or a type of entity. Yeah, and we're going to talk a little bit more about a couple of the figures that she mentioned later, but there's something that I read and I couldn't find it when I went back to like actually put it in the document. There's a name for the type of spiritual beings that these small isolated communities were making amongst themselves and i cannot find it so if you know it please email us the lrh show at gmail.com i'd love to remember that so i could look a little bit more into it and maybe find some of those smaller deities because it very much reminded me of that movie that's on netflix oh my god what is it called the ritual right right right, right. and i just pictured like some small creepy little mountain town with like 200 people and they're all sacrificing one another to some weird woods woodsman god so metal, so Scandinavian. <laughs> I, I was trying to look it up for you, but I couldn't find it. I it's I thought it was in the Wikipedia article, but 
Uh, no, it's not. Because uh, that's I, for Jewish populations. <laughs> yes. Um, I could not find it. I'd love to know what that word was. I'm going to keep looking, but if you know, let us know. Now, regardless of Krampus's beginnings, at some point in the 17th century, the stories of St. Nicholas and Krampus intertwined, giving us the start of the Krampus that we know today. It might be a good idea here to briefly go over St. Nicholas himself. St. Nicholas of Mira, traditionally thought to have lived between the 15th of March 270 and the 6th of December 343, also known as Nicholas of Bari, was an early Christian bishop of Greek descent from the maritime city of Mira in Asia Minor. So <laughs> you don't really think about that when you think about St. Nick, right? No, definitely not. You don't think of St. Nick coming from Greece. I don't, anyway. No, absolutely not with that sweet, oily tan. <laughs> He's just hairy. Just and like a little back sweaty, hair. a little slicked back. It's a jar full of olives. And a big hunk of lamb. <laughs> uh, because of the many miracles attributed to his intercession, he is also known as Nicholas the Wonder Worker. This dude had a lot of quote unquote miracles around him. He was also known as a great demon banisher. Ooh. St. Nicholas is the patron saint of sailors, merchants, archers, repentant thieves, prostitutes. We call them sex workers now. Yes. Children, brewers, pawnbrokers, unmarried people, and students in various cities and countries around Europe. So he's, uh, he's looking out for a lot of people. His reputation evolved among the faithful, as was common for early Christian saints, and his legendary habit of secret gift-giving gave rise to the traditional model of Santa Claus through Santa Claus. Uh, he's also known for destroying a temple of Artemis in his homeland once Constantine became the emperor of Rome. What? Yes. Um, so he went back with his Christ new Christian followers back to where he was from and basically was like, everything you're doing is wrong. He didn't want the people that he had converted to go back to their old ways. And so they essentially tore down the temple <gasps> of Artemis that was there. And you'll and find Artemis out. Artemis wept. A lot of these saints weren't that great. <laughs> we And the more you look into them, the more you'll find that. Uh, St. Benedict... Apparently not a great guy. Religion has a really funny way of turning everything you don't believe in into a giant demon of sorts. And he did a great job of playing the locals into thinking his decimation of the temple showed them the power of God. In reality, this was just a typical Christian power mood, sending in goons to intimidate and reform. Anywho, in late medieval England, on St. Nicholas Day, parishes held Yuletide boy bishop celebrations. Oh, no. I bet they loved those. Oh, my God, Chad, They're like, no, no it's almost... Boy Bishop no, Day. It's oh, it's Boy Bishop yeah. Day. That's horrible. What is that? Well, as part of this celebration, youths perform the functions <gasps> of priests and bishops and okay, exercise sorry. rule um, over I'm their sorry. elders. I thought that said on. <laughs> oh, I thought that said on, not of. And I. Oh, got I'm sure really... it was on. Them. Okay, sure... all right, all right. I can't. It makes me so uncomfortable. Right, young Jeremy, come here and put the bread in my mouth. Oh my God, Chad! Jesus Christ! You just suck it on the fucking thumb. No. <laughs> too far, too far. And then he goes to bed, and he's like, "No, ah, I can't no, no, hear no, no, anymore. No, 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 I can't listen. hear anymore. You it's just not... said sucking on a little thumb. I can't hear it anymore." This is funny. And then he goes back to bed the at the end of the day, and he goes, ah, "Only three hundred and sixty-four more Jesus. days until Boy Bishop Day." Okay, all right. <laughs> Continue. What else is it um, really about? Okay. I can't. The, I can't. Well, no, seriously. Uh, that's what they did. They performed functions of priests and bishops, and they uh, exercised rule over so the elders. So it was really like a day where like the little kids got to pretend yeah, like they were the priests. Day. It's it was backwards, backwards day. day. Exactly. Okay. This is just a backwards day. Uh, but today, St. Nicholas is still celebrated as a great gift giver in several Western European and Central European countries. According to one source, in medieval times, a nun used the 6th night of December to deposit baskets of food and clothes anonymously at the doorsteps of the needy. According to another source, on the same night, every sailor or ex-sailor of the Low Countries, which at that time was virtually all the male population, would descend to the harbor towns to participate in a church celebration for their patron saint. And this is interesting to me because it feels like, like the really beginning of Christmas like that we know today. Mm. Uh, on the way back from that celebration, they would stop at one of the various Nicholas fairs to buy some hard-to-come-by goods, gifts for their loved ones, and invariably some little presents for their children. While the real gifts would only be presented on Christmas, the little presents for the children were given right away, courtesy of St. Nicholas. This made St. Nicholas a patron saint of children and later students as well. So that's the beginnings of our St. Nick. The date of December 6th is still considered St. Nicholas Day in many European countries. Krampus also has his own day, December 5th, known as Krampus Night. Or Krampus Nacht. Krampus Nacht. 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 Krampus Nacht. <sighs> My accents continue to improve. Yes, every day. Every getting, single episode. Getting better. One day I'll sit down and like actually 
practice. You're just going to sit down and like speak Russian yeah, or speak something one day? Yeah. You guys aren't going to see it coming. The creature and St. Nicholas are said to arrive on the evening of December 5th. While St. Nicholas rewards nice children by leaving presents, Krampus beats those who are naughty with branches and sticks. In some cases, he is said to eat them or take them to hell. On December 6th, St. Nicholas Day, children awaken to find their gifts or nurse their injuries. Oh. Yeah, so some of them don't get shit and they're just like... Nursing their wounds. Putting Neosporin on their, their <laughs> birch strike wounds. So Krampus Night is a little more intense for the kids who may be thinking, hey, maybe it was a little much of me to try and force my brother to eat, like, worms. I don't know what German kids eat in the 17th century. Whatever. What were they doing back then? How Eating were they rocks. tormenting Chewing on rocks. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Kids who are less than ideal could be beaten by Krampus or even worse, stuffed into Krampus' sack and hauled off to his lair to be tortured or eaten. So, as we've already seen in our voodoo episode, it seems like some of the traditional culture's beliefs got mixed in with new ideologies once the Catholic Church rolled into town. Yep, that's and, about right. Yeah, and as usual with the church, they didn't take too kindly with anything new being introduced that was off script. The Catholic Church for a time tried, without success, to ban Krampus. Uh, it wasn't ever like outright like you can't say Krampus's name or something like that, but they tried to stop like the parades and stuff that would happen around Krampus. At the you know, time. that's really interesting to me. I guess I understand because he's not he's not a saint, no. right? So then you're almost in, in a way like worshiping another deity. But you would want you would think like he, that Krampus would kind of be in alignment with the Catholic Church. That it's not like all reward. That there's also punishment. Well, that God is a just God, and you don't always get good things. If you've done bad, you get punished for doing bad. So, like, you would think that Krampus would be, they'd be like, yeah, kids, get your shit together. Yeah, and that's something that I did read that it was odd because for a very long period of time, saints were often accompanied by some sort of demon some, okay. to sort of, you know, give that exact impression. Right. And so Krampus was St. Nicholas's companion through that but the catholic church oh, yeah. did like, not like it gotcha. and honestly though there's so much of this story that seems to be hearsay and right. you know most people do believe some version of this did happen some others say maybe it didn't happen but if it did happen it was uh, very early on but this next part did happen so they weren't able to ban krampus and this seems to have really gotten under the skin of some of the more extreme christians in austria in the aftermath of the 1923 election there, the Krampus tradition was prohibited by the Dolphus regime under the Fatherland's Front, the Vaterlandish Front. I don't know if that's right. Oh, that sounded great. Yay. I mean, I don't know shit, but to me it sounded great. <laughs> so it was prohibited by them and the Christian Social Party. In the 1950s, the government distributed pamphlets titled Krampus is an Evil Man. Wow. Yeah, they were very anti-Krampus, and I don't necessarily... And the kids were like, yeah, he is evil. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, and they saw it as a so some sort of a socialist idea. I don't I don't understand. I don't know Weird. what happened. Okay. It was very strange. They were fascist. You know, fascists don't like anything. Anything fun. Uh, now, I tried my best to find any version of this pamphlet, but it seems like if it's on the internet, it's deep inside some niche hole that I couldn't find. If anyone out there listening, once again, has a photo of one of these or a link to an online source, I would love to see it. I can only imagine it's along the lines of those old super creepy booklets that you used to see in church. You know what I'm talking about? They were like three inches by three inches, like a little cube, and it was just full of pictures burning in hell. So here's the deal. You went to a different kind of church than I did. Oh, okay. So we didn't have <laughs> pictures of people burning in hell. Now, I had booklets of saints. I when I, I grew up in a Catholic church, so I had booklets that had stories of all of the saints, and some of them weren't great stories, um, but I never had depictions of, like, the Well, I don't even know. I never saw, like, where who made them. There was always someone, though, that had them, and it was always a picture of, like, like the first picture was like a man on a long road and a man going down the short road and then he falls into a pit of hell and everyone's just burning. That's what I saw when I was little. <laughs> <laughs> so here's the deal. Not everyone saw that. I guess not. Not everyone, not everyone not had everyone the same had lap those, experience but... as me. Nope. That's insane. You know, we a lot of us did have that fire and brimstone God, but we didn't actually have illustrations to go along with it. So congratulations. You had a visual aid. I turned out fine. <laughs> so... Let's see. Oh, that's so funny because you have been yeah. to the old school Baptist <laughs> I did church. Say that. <laughs> and yeah, I did attend. Uh, I, I'm from, yeah, <laughs> we don't have to go into that. <laughs> uh, I am from an area where Methodist, Presbyterian, Baptist, it's all the same. It's all Southern Baptist. It's all Southern Baptist. Don't, don't, let, the, don't let the label fool you. It's all Southern Baptist in North Carolina. Uh, believe me, those pamphlets taught me that you are absolutely going to hell. So are you and me and everyone else. 
The Christian Social Party is actually still around today in Austria, but now they're known as the New People's Party. So they're still there, and they actually have a very large control of most of the uh, the government there. And they have a big sign that they put out for <clears throat> Christmas that it's a, a picture of Krampus with like the circle and slash through it. And yes, said, exactly. Not allowed. Um, but at the same time, it's like they are in, technically in control there, I guess. But they had to do some sort of they had to form some sort of a coalition with like the Green Party in order to stay in power. Uh, everything. You know, it's not like America pretty much everywhere else where it's like when something if even if there's like two majority parties, there still seems to be like groups of inside the government that are all have to work together like to make things happen underneath. Yeah, exactly. But now I think the next part of the story is my favorite simply because there are few things I enjoy more than watching a large group of pious people writhe at the fact that they failed at repressing anything they don't like. The darker side of religious folks favorite holiday has slowly but surely been creeping back in. The winter solstice celebrations that were co-opted by the Christian movement were much more akin to Halloween, with costume and masked figures moving door-to-door throughout a community. In a Vice interview with Al Reidner, the author that we mentioned earlier, he states that, quote, The winter season was considered a time when the veil between the worlds was lifted and was associated with a complex mythology of ghosts, witchcraft, and other supernatural beings. We are definitely seeing a wave of people that has begun to embrace this type of belief. There's a large chunk of society that's starting to let go of this fake everything is fine style of living and take a hard look inward. And that's leading to a less religious, more spiritual group of people. With this movement, I think people are beginning to also learn more about the old ways, things like paganism, witchcraft, etc. And that in turn is leading people down a road that wants to return to these old styles of celebration. And this is very interesting to me because I feel like these things do come in waves. The same thing with like tattoos, punk music, stuff like that. Everything comes in a big wave in and out. And so it's kind of cool to be on like the rising crest of a wave of this and just watch it happen definitely but i want it to go away so well can we, can we, can we, we might be dead before it goes away though that's what okay, i'm saying okay yeah exactly okay, that's fine and things like this do just sort of seem to come and go but krampus has always been here he just they but just can't krampus get rid of it. will remain he's just stuck under your toenail just going Mah! reiner believes this movement is decades in the making and a figure like krampus fits right into this style Reidner, in the Vice interview, has a beautiful explanation of how Krampus fits into the picture. He states that, quote, The reasons for the Krampus resurgent is different in Europe, but in America it would be the punk aesthetic and the sort of impudent internet culture of memes. Ever since the 1960s, the countercultures looked for some way to respond to the holidays. In those days, neo-pagans began celebrating the customs of Yule. And by the 1970s, you begin seeing an even more nihilistic response with Christmas slasher films like Black Christmas or Christmas Evil. All of this was a rebellion against the parental generation, the Norman Rockwell Christmas, and the Coca-Cola Santa. Yeah, I don't think he's wrong. <laughs> Not at all. I think we're right back where, <laughs> yeah. yeah, where those guys were. Uh-huh. Uh huh. I don't know if it's ever went away. I think I think we're riding that wave at this point. It's uh, it hasn't fully crested, but I think we we're it's still rising, and I think we've just hopped on. You know, I think it's interesting because I would say that in the early aughts there was definitely the emo movement, but I don't think that it was as strong as as the punk movement that we're seeing today. No, like so it it, it has existed like in our childhood and, and teen years, but I do think that it's it's like cresting as you said now. Yeah, like and maybe that's just because. Of, of my shift in awareness in the last few years, but it really feels like even like last year and the year before, like this is happening now. Age of Aquarius. Emo's hey, not dead. Also, Emo's not dead. No, I never said Emo was dead. <laughs> Did I say those words? I would never say, I would never say Emo was dead. Uh, so Reiner continues, as the punk aesthetic of the 1980s moved into the 1990s, it was giving birth to things like SantaCon, those mobs of drunken Santas that take over dozens of cities each year. Nowadays, that event's just sort of an amorphous pub crawl, but I was an organizer with the group that created that event, the Cacophony Society. And in its original form, SantaCon was more pointedly and theatrically satiric. Its mission was to skewer the American holiday by making a degrading display of its chief icon. When images of Krampus began circulating on the internet in the mid-2000s, that really set fire to it all. Those of us who came up in the punk milieu recognized the Krampus as a new savior of Christmas. We'd grown up chafing against this ideal of Christmas being a sentimental, domestic ideal of family values and childhood wonder. And here we had this shocking figure who celebrated the holiday by beating children. He seemed to perfectly embody the rebellion we felt. Then, if you started looking into the figure, got beyond those images of whips and chains and frightened children... If you did a little reading, you'd realize that Krampus also fit in with that 1960s countercultural desire to embrace the holiday's pagan roots. So it's a pretty great explanation, 
very thorough explanation of Krampus through the years. Yeah. And how he has sort of uh, wind, wound his way into the hearts and minds of people everywhere. Basically, Santa is Bing Crosby and Krampus is Alice in Chains. He's punk rock as fuck and people are into it more and more each year. I love that. Great line. Thanks. It's a good analogy. It took me hours to come up oh, with that. Oh, well done. Hours. Well done. <laughs> the things we do for you. Today, Krampus celebrations have returned in large numbers, with events being held in many places around the globe. Festivities involving Krampus include the Krampus Lough, or the Krampus Run. In this activity, which involves an alcohol, of course, people dressed as the creature parade through the streets, scaring spectators and sometimes chasing them. Sounds rad. It sounds, it really, sounds cool. really fun. Yeah. To a point. To a point. You, there's always going to be something that takes it a little too far. Well, that's kind of the point of the Krampus run. So as we, uh, so we'll find out. We'll see, we'll see what we're talking about in a second. Okay. Beginning in the late 20th century, amid efforts to preserve cultural heritage, Krampus runs became increasingly popular in Austria and Germany. These runs sound insanely fun. And there's a chance that you'll get to see someone get absolutely pummeled with sticks, which makes it even that more awesome. Or problematic. Whichever. You know. No, it's Europe. They don't care. You go skiing at the Alps in, in the Alps in Europe and get lost, and they will just let you die. And they'll be like, "Zit was his fault." See, here's my thing. I like to think I would be like, "Yeah, get him!" But I know that if I was actually there witnessing somebody getting beat with a stick, I would, I would probably get a little upset. I don't know. I, I think can't it would hang. Be fun. It's I a can't very, hang. it's a very un-American thought to think that like I'm going to the parade and this man might hit me with something. <laughs> Uh, I think it'd be cool to see, but they, uh, I don't know if I put it in here. They only aim for like your lower body. So they're not like striking you in the head. Okay. Which, okay. <laughs> okay. Well, you said pummeled. We had said pummeled. I was picturing somebody like literally getting beaten into oblivion with a stick, like blood coming out of their mouth. And I was like, I wouldn't. How hardcore would that be? I wouldn't be into it. I'm a, I'll be honest with you. I like to think that I can hang and, but I would, if someone was being beaten that Badly in front of it's my so eyes, metal. I would be. I would probably cry a little bit. Just like hundreds of people cheering while men in Krampus outfits just drunkenly just beat a dude. <laughs> and this is where that you know opposites attract. You my like love. potatoes, and I like potatoes. Is that right? Is that the song? It's you're close. It's you say tomato, I say tomato. <laughs> you say potato, I say potato, tomato, tomato, potato, potato. Let's call the whole thing off. Okay. Um, anyway, see opposites attract. Opposites attract. According to Mental Floss, there's a very good chance you'll get flogged if you run into the wrong drunken Krampus. This quote from a tourist experiencing the mayhem describes a Krampus loft like this. Quote, the narrow streets in the old city section of Salzburg were packed with pedestrians as the Krampus stomped through. I'm sorry. Is that Krampus plural? Is that Krampus? That is pussy? A plural. I think it is. I it don't is know. not Krampus. I don't. That cannot Can we be. We say Krampusy. Cr- Krampusy. We're like a Krampusy. Yeah, Krampusy. Like a posse of Krampuses. <laughs> yes, that's exactly. No, I'm what not going to say what you just said because that still sounds wrong. Many people were caught unaware and reacted with terror. Some would flee and try to seek refuge in a shop or restaurant, only to be pursued by a determined Krampus. With so many easy targets, we again managed to escape largely unharmed. At times, we were chased, jostled, and struck, but compared with the brutality we witnessed, it was obvious we had been spared the full brunt of what Krampus could muster. Yeah, you go you go take it on, babe. I'll I'll um, watch from a balcony. Yeah, it'd be wild. Like could you imagine it's like Someone from like I don't know Malaysia, and you're just like in yeah, one of these yeah, little towns. Celebration, Christmas, let's do it! And then you just get beaten. Well, I was just I was thinking more along as like you're you're just like I want a baguette. You leave your hotel, you go across the street. There's a lot of people out. You don't know what's happening. But you're yeah, so you're like a festival, and you a go, parade. You just, How fun! You walk in, you get your coffee. You're gonna go order a baguette. Suddenly, and then a someone horned pours figure. into that, and someone a Krampus following him, just whipping him. <laughs> inside the baguette store and you're just like i didn't know this is how people acted up here it would be very disorienting yeah according to the history article i pulled this from the writer went to krampus lofts in three cities and described quote savage beatings to people's thighs and shins as well as a krampus chasing down and sitting on a teenager but hey, come here, little Johnny. Let me just a drunken man. Just let me sit on you. Come here. Just let me sit on you. <laughs> Americans would have such a field day with the lawsuits. Oh yeah, they just couldn't. You couldn't necessarily. I think. Well, 
they do some here, but I, th- I would imagine you have to sign some. Like before they hit you, you they're like, waiver. "Will you sign this waiver, sir?" Yeah, please. you got to sign a bunch of stuff. Will you hurry, please. We have to move on. Hurry. Don't look it over. Just sign it. Yes. Um, but despite the fear and bruises, it's all in good fun. And hey, at least they aim for the eggs. At least they aim for the. At least they aim for the legs. <laughs> I can't say it. Did you see? I couldn't get it out. Ah. Uh! But despite the fear and bruises, it's all in good fun. And hey, at least they aim for the legs. If you want to go to a Krampus loft here in the U.S., you may have to drive to either New Orleans or, surprisingly, South Carolina or Indiana. What the fuck? Yeah. Why those places? It's super weird, but they both, South Carolina has one of the oldest Krampus wall or runs or whatever it's called in the, in the United States. Can't you just imagine Mike Pence out there next year? He's done being vice president. But before he goes back to hating the gays, he just needs to relax. <gasps> yeah. Can't you just see him <laughs> bit over the knee of some big manly Krampus pretending to hate it? But secretly, this is just what the doctor ordered after his yearly shock treatment. It's his version of just going out oh dancing. Oh, my God, Chad. <laughs> well done. Uh, Let's all round of applause. That's my bit. For that bit I'll see Chad. myself out now. Well Goodbye, done. Goodbye, everyone. Well Thank done. you. Thank Mike you. Pence would love a beating from Krampus. He, I think he would. Mike Pence and I Krampus. I can see him blushing now. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then he says, Mother, you have to look yes. at this. <laughs> Mother, look at this video of me getting spanked. Mother, can we do this at home? <laughs> Mother uh. and boy. <laughs> Mother boy. <laughs> That's from Arrested Development. If you haven't seen it, it's a great show. Watch it. Mother boy is amazing. And Mike Pence fits in beautifully. <laughs> okay. There's also a new type of event that seems to be blooming here in the U.S. An event company named 13th Floor Entertainment puts on an event that asks, what if we took Santa and threw him in a sack and buried him underneath a haunted house? Well, what would happen? What what if? Um, well, they offer a Krampus themed haunted house experience in ten cities across the country, guaranteed to give you the holiday scare you need. Um, there are also a few other large haunted houses that are not associated with 13th Floor that put on their own Krampus themed uh, haunted house each year, such as the Blood Manor Scare Factory in New York City. That name's a try hard. It um, is. It, it really is, is. Very much. And I looked into some of these. They look super interesting, but it's definitely not like, what is it, the Krampus Schlaf? Krampus Schlaf level. It's definitely not like that. So, Krampus is the big name of the group. But there are also many other Krampus-style figures throughout Europe. It seems like it was common for St. Nicholas to be followed around by some sort of dark companion. These include the Belschnickel, who Dwight Schrute abuses Jim as in one of the Christmas episodes of The Office. I'm sure y'all are familiar. If you're not, where the fuck have you been? (laughs) A very controversial character, also known as Black Pete, which you can go look up because, man, that's not great. It is not. It is Justin Trudeau levels of of ancient spiritual belief. I don't know. (laughs) Racism? (laughs) Ancient racism. It's not great. Uh, Yeah, he's there. Actually, I think he's been remade now as he's known as Sooty Pete. And instead of. Ah, so he's covered in soot. Yes, gotcha. exactly. And they don't they don't do what they were doing. <laughs> That's good. That's for the it's, best. It is for the best. Um the last is known as Necht Rupecht. I'm hoping I'm saying that right. I could just be butchering it. That's fine. Um whose origin story appears to be a nice dark European fairy tale. I just looked at the pronunciation and I had it wrong. So oh, okay. the word connect, it's connect. Oh, it's a hard K, okay. In German it means servant or farmhand. And in a sense, he does act as St. Nicholas's helper since they travel together and he does all the heavy lifting. Some say that Connect Rupecht was a wounded foundling that St. Nicholas rescued and raised. Others say he is a wild man with horns who comes out of the forest at Christmas time, a dark elf to help St. Nicholas. A more obscure legend comes from a story about St. Nicholas. St. Nicholas arrived at an inn and discovered a horrible crime. The innkeeper had killed three boys and stuffed them into the pickling barrel. St. Nicholas brought the boys back to life, and the innkeeper was punished by being forced to work alongside St. Nicholas as Connect Rupecht for all of eternity. Yeah, and this is actually attested to one of St. Nicholas's miracles, which I found out later. Yeah, but it's kind of a creepy story. Super creepy story. It's uh, Christmas, so here's Connect Rupecht. He killed three boys, and he's with me. (laughs) And he's my slave now. Yes, would you like a gift? Yeah, definitely strange. 
As we wrap up, I'd like to touch on a few super fun things we found while doing this research. The first is that Krampus may have been one of the earliest memes on record. Austria was the first country in the world to create and publish postcards to be sent to friends and family, which I did not know. Super interesting. Shortly after their creation, Krampus began to make an appearance each holiday season. They often include drawings of Krampus dragging kids to what appears to be hell, or his many interactions with voluptuous women. Krampus likes them thick, everyone. As oh, if, shit. Yes. So it was like a pinup. I was like a pinup Krampus. Not like he was the pinup girl, but Krampus and a pinup lady? Yeah, pretty okay. much. And there were also versions of like a female Krampus carrying around men over their shoulder. There's a lot of weird innuendos going on. But regardless, like I said, uh, Krampus likes them thick, as is Germanic tradition. You can see many of these online today, and I got to say, I love them. They are really, really interesting. Uh, Krampus.com, I think, is what it is. We'll they, try to throw some up on the Instagram. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They're really, really silly. And a lot of the designs of Krampus I see on like, T-shirts and stuff come from these postcards. And I wouldn't have known that had I not looked them up. So it's super cool. There's also a really fun tradition in Bellingham, Washington called KrampusCon. It's basically a pub crawl, but while they move through town, they also crash Santa Cons and harass all the Santas, which I think is funny as hell. I That's absolutely hilarious. need to see a group of drunken Krampus hurling insults as a bunch of drunken Santas. I need to see it. We're not that far away. We need it to happen. Absolutely. Anywho, love him or hate him, Krampus isn't going anywhere. His popularity continues to grow, and with that, so does the true origins of winter solstice celebrations. The end to St. Nick's Yang. The rediscovery of this holiday anti-hero was a much-needed shot in the arm to a commercialized holiday season, one that pumps some much-needed edge into yet another diluted series of celebrations. He reminds us that there is a wild side to our winter traditions that has been overlooked for far too long. So I say to you, this Christmas, stick some horns on your head, attach a giant pile of fur and straw to your body, and go enjoy the holidays the way you want in a drunken haze swatting people with a giant bundle of sticks. Tis the season. And that's Krampus, everybody. Well done. I love that ending. That's great. Thank you. Thank you. That was uh, great. That I really enjoyed this episode. I Just like I enjoy all Krampus. of them. I love I'm, every single episode we've done. I do, Each too. Each one gets a little bit more fun. I learn something every single time. This one was great. A great holiday-themed episode. Had a blast. I, I really, I, I love it. I Absolutely. love Krampus. We hope you did, too, everyone. Yeah. What's coming down the pipe, Chad? What's well, coming down the pipe? I know we have some other um, seasonal episodes coming your way before the end of the year, or at least we're going to do our darndest to get them we're your gonna way. We're going to try. By we got a deadline year. we got to meet. And, uh, it's we don't be, do it's well with deadlines. We <laughs> don't do well with deadlines, everyone. But we're, we're going to try. If it doesn't come out the week of Christmas, it will be out very shortly after Christmas, the next episode. We're Eventually, I we are going to North Carolina, back home for a week. And so there probably won't be an episode then unless we just really go crazy and we're able to get two out in one week. But we also got some uh, missing 411s coming back. Yeah, we're doing that's some more right. of that we got as some well. of those coming down the pipe. Starting in the new year. I'm it's thinking, we're thinking that while we're in North Carolina, there might be some um, additional video content coming from that trip. Uh, I don't know if we've, we might have even already talked about this, so I don't, I don't know why I'm secretive about it. Is okay, it a secret? Is it a secret? A, we'll keep it a secret. We're going to keep that's it a secret. Okay. We'll but stay secret. tuned. There might be some fun video content coming your way. Yeah, exactly. But that's it for this week's episode, everyone. Thanks for listening. That's it. We yeah. did it. If you have any comments or questions or concerns about any of our episodes, or you'd like to send us some links to some sweet Krampus postcards and stuff like that, send us an email at the LRH show at gmail.com. That's right. You can also find us on Twitter and Instagram at the underscore LRH underscore pod. You can also find us on Facebook at the LRH pod. And on Patreon at patreon.com slash the LRH podcast. And one more thing, guys, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please leave us a rating and a review. It's going to help us a ton and it's going to help us ultimately, hopefully, get on the new podcast page. And we need your help to do that. And we really appreciate every single one of you who has left a review so far. So once again, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, give us just a nice little review. It'd be so great. And if you want some more interaction with me, I'm streaming on Twitch Sunday, Tuesday, Thursday at weary underscore TTV at 8 p.m. till whenever Mountain Standard Time. So come hang out and say hello on there. I'd love to see you. Is that it? Did we do all the social media things? Yes, we did. We're getting better every <laughs> single week with us. Good Thanks job, for bearing Emily. with us. Yeah, <laughs> thank you very much. And thank you guys for listening. We hope all of you have a wonderful week. If you don't hear from us before the holiday, we hope you have a happy holiday, but we're going to do our darndest to get you another episode before then. Absolutely, we are. And thank you guys for listening. That's right. So join us next week on The Long, Long Road, Road Home. Home. Goodbye, everyone. See you later.